Hi, Doug here. So the Blade Center test server has been moved to my, well, play rack now. This is a nice little portable rack for doing experimentation because the Blade Center itself pulls a ridiculous amount of power. I know I keep saying that in all my old videos, but this is going to be a full walkthrough of what the Blade Center is, why I call it that, and so forth. So this chassis here that sticks all the way back about 30 inches, this is called an IBM Blade Center H chassis. So it's literally an empty box that a bunch of things go into. So the first thing we're going to be putting in is the cooling fans. So for example, this is one of the cooling fans. This cooling fan is 220 volt and pulls 850 watts. 850 watts just for a single fan. And guess what? There's two of them in there. So this guy goes in the back here. I can't remember which direction these go. There we go. And these little louvers here open up when the fan kicks on. And there's these baffles inside, which is going to be a trend through this video series. As you see, these baffles are built so whenever you pull something out that's hot swappable, anything with an orange plug is hot swappable, which means you can pull it out while the power is hot. Anything that's blue, you have to do when the power is off. So these flaps will come up to maintain proper airflow through the system at all times. Because when I pull that second fan out, this one needs to ramp up to full speed, and it can't have a giant hole here. It needs to be able to pull the air through the front of the server, hence why that pulls up. So... We need to load the second fan. I thought I was kidding with power. There's two of these fans. So we have over 1600 watts just in fans in this thing. And I believe this one goes upside down, like so. And we'll lock that in. So again, these are 220 volt cooling fans, a ridiculous amount of CFM. This is what I used to make my liquid nitrogen cooler out of. Uh, so we now have our two cooling fans in. So we have these slots, top and bottom. I have some filler plates in there at the moment. What those are for, are these modules. So these modules here are uh, interface modules. So think of these like PCI Express cards uh, you have in your computer, or PCI cards. This one here happens to be a Cisco 10 gigabit network switch. So it has SFP ports plus for 10 gigabit and a management port. So this switch itself on the back has something called a Finiband. So it basically has uh, 14 10 gigabit ports on the back, the interface to all the blades on the front. And then it gives you one, two, three, four, five, six on the back and then a console port and a management port. So these guys, in theory if I remember right, slide in like so and get locked in. They have orange tabs, they are also hot swappable. Cool thing about this server is I have two of those as well because with industrial servers you want everything to be redundant. That way if one fails you have a fail over where it goes to the second one to keep the production run up because there are 14 servers in this thing and if you happen to have one your network switch goes down you'd lose 14 servers worth of interconnectivity can't have that, hence the redundant nature of a server like this. So now we have these open pockets on the side here. What goes in those? Well, we're gonna get into these, but these are the little micro modules. There's a bunch of them. This one is a gigabit port module. So it's got four gigabit ports with a console port on the front there. And then it has 14 gigabit ports on the back side here. This one's made by Cisco. I believe these ones go in like that. Here is a, another gigabit one. And that one, if I remember right, I had on this side. had that one there like so and then this one here is called a fiber channel card so it works very similar to the fiber networks with SFP plus ports but this is built for fiber channel and this one's used for SAN or server area network used for storage devices it's made by brocade this is a four gig one I have four and eight gig modules so we're going to stick that guy in like so and then this here is called the management module. Think of this as your home module. This is your keyboard, your video, your mouse, and dedicated network port. Even comes with a little card here, it gets you set up on how to program it. Because without this, you have no control over the data center uh, or the blade center. And this is basically your front end management port. This is what allows you to remote into the chassis itself with none of the servers turned on. It's a computer all on its own. It allows you to just maintain the chassis, see how much power draw you have, how much things, how much power things are pulling, and also allows you to remotely turn on and off different blades. So I have another gigabit module here. And I think these ones, yeah, I can't load those ones into those ports. So we'll load those guys there like so. And then these modules here, I have yet to figure out what they are. There's no sticker on them. Um, made in Canada, it's got a very long part number, but they have these very strange little dual pin connectors. Again, they have link activity, A, B, C, D link ports. Not sure on these guys. Let's see if one of these will fit into uh, this management port here. That one does not. All right. Again, I have bunches of these because I have two of these blade centers. 
So I see that one does not fit. Does it fit this way? It does not. So I do have these, which are basically just dummy chassis. Nice, and those load in nicely. So we're just gonna to toss those in. All right, so our chassis is now fully populated. It needs to get power. So powering this thing, like I always said, it's a power hungry beast, which is why I don't run it anymore. I'll give you an example. This particular server came with these power connectors on it, with these large power connectors. This server is 208 volt to 240 volt, and it needs multiple circuits because it can pull uh, 80,000 or produce 80,000 BTUs of heat. So if I remember right, that's about 45 amps at 240 volts. So hence the big power cords. Well, most houses do not have a connector like that. So the next thing you can get is this guy. This is the same thing, a breakout panel that gives you three 20 amp circuits to power everything. So three 20 amp, 20, or three 220 volt, 20 amp circuits. So what I did is I took a bunch of these harnesses and I cut them up and I made these two cables here that plug into these massive connectors on the back of the server like so. Now I have to make these so they're removable because whenever I'm not using the server, I need to be able to close the door on the back so they come off. But these are giving me my 220 volt. These run up to this massive transformer here. This thing's probably about 70 pounds of uh, cast iron. It is a very large transformer that takes 120 volt, converts it to 220, because I didn't run a dedicated 220 plug just to my play test rack. This giant plug coming out here, I don't know if you can see it, this big cord here, this is a 10 gauge uh, wire that feeds a 30 amp, 120 volt outlet that I have in the lab here, that then feeds the input side of this, which then gives you my 220 volt output. It's a bit limited because I can't run this chassis at full capacity, but I only have four server blades in there. So it's perfectly sized uh, to work. It just looks a little unorthodox at the moment. I gotta finish cleaning up the grounds here because I just moved it in. What is it sitting on? This is a rack blower. So there's two fans, one here, one here, and then the third one over here. I have it set up so these fans blow across the coil windings of this transformer to help keep it cool. Cause I'm running it at about 80% of its capacity and it gets pretty toasty. So that's why I have it sitting on that fan blade. So that's the back of this. Let's take you around to the front and let's load that up. All right, so now that we're over at the front of the rack, we're gonna open this up. Here is the blade center chassis mounted in my test rack up at the front. And you can see a bunch of empty spots here. So I'm gonna get to what these other pieces are in a moment. First thing we're gonna do, to show you this on the side here this is the instruction manual we walk you through each component what you can move out while power is on what you can't and what will run without and so forth explains the power draw and things like that really cool system to be built in on the right side here we have a dvd rom drive we have a switch for locating the keyboard video mouse and we have two usb ports and this is your media tray so what makes this a blade center are blades this is called a blade you can see a large connection on the back there and then your components on the front so what you do is you slide a blade in like so, and then you lock the, lock the little latches in. And these guys all load in like so, and you latch them in. Each one of these is its own server with processors, hard drives, RAM, everything, which is really, really cool. Once I get these all in, I'm gonna show you something, but we're gonna get to that in a moment. So let me get these all loaded in here. There we go. So the next thing that goes in after you have your blades are these large gaps, which is your power supplies. And these are absolute monsters. So if you have a gaming rig at home, or if you have a big powerful PC, which you think it is, those will usually have around an 800 watt power supply. Some of you may even have a thousand watt, really pushing the edge if you've got a 1600 watt power supply, because that's like the limit of what a circuit can run. These bad boys hold a lot of power. This particular one here from IBM, will produce at 12 volts, 236 amps. That is over 2,880 watts of power from one of these. You wanna know what's really crazy? This server has four of them, hence the huge power demand on it. So these guys load into the front like so and get latched in. Here is the second one getting loaded in. So we're at, three, we're at 6 6,000 watts there. And then there's two more that go at the top. So we're at 9,000 watts. There we go. And once I get this one in, we now have 12,000 watts of computing power, which is insane. And then you have these little guys, which are your dust guards that go over top of the power supplies. The server itself will run on two of the four power supplies at reduced capacity or run on three of them at full capacity. So you can lose one or pull one out to hot swap while it's running, depending on your load. Speaking of load, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull some of these out here 
just to make a little bit of a shelf. Like so, and we're gonna pull this front one all the way out. Cause I wanna show you what these look like inside. So there's two tabs on the side here. You push those in, it releases the cover and then the cover lifts off. Inside here, you have two spots for your hot swappable hard drives. So you have little sleds there that go in. These are just small SATA drives, SSDs, whatever you want. These are your RAM slots. So originally these had 96 gigs of RAM in each, a ridiculous amount of RAM slots. They use half height RAM, 16 gig modules. These are the two processors inside. These are 24 core each. Xeon, I think they're E5 uh, 2600s. I could be wrong on that. They're around three gigahertz, 24 core. This mezzanine board over here is a 10 gigabit uh, infinite band connection for the server. It also has dual gigabit on board. Uh, I forget what this particular riser is for. I think it might be for management. Uh, but basically it is a stripped down server module. Over here is a small little USB header. Allows you to put in a USB drive and you can boot your operating system from the USB drive internally. The reason they stripped them down like this is this is the bare minimum you need for a computer. Processors, RAM, and then the management system and the bridges for running everything. That's it. So you're only powering what you need and then the power supplies can be spread across all the load of all the blades, which is a genius system. And then this guy fits onto the top here like so, and then it latches back on. On the front here, there are these little switches. This one says MT is your media tray, and the one above it's your monitor. So this allows you, when you select your monitors, your KVM, keyboard, video, mouse, and that allows you to control it and see the output on that rear um, module. And then the media tray is the thing on the front here, the DVDs and the USB drays, so you can put in a USB drive. And that little white little dot there is the power button to turn it on and off. So again, I'll slide these guys all back in like so. And you can do this while the system's running. And what's really cool about it is they designed that obviously in mind. Whoops. So these guys here, let me pull one of these out. This is just an empty tray. So these are slot fillers. They have the same airflow profile as one of the servers. Inside here, you heard when I was sliding these in, there's a baffle inside. That baffle blocks the air when these are removed. That way the air is sucked through there and it maintains the airflow through here because the air will choose the path of least resistance. So if you remove one of the servers, it'll automatically try to go through that and skip going through the complex passage past the processors. So again, this is the IBM Blade Center. Next video, we're gonna power this thing up, log into it and see how it still works. Thanks for watching. You know, I couldn't end the video without powering it up. Let's see what happens. Powering up, 220 volt. Let's just say she's a bit loud. I'm sitting about two inches from the camera at the moment. I'm right here. And I imagine it's a bit hard to hear me. The fans are still ramping up. Looks like we have one power supply that didn't fully engage. But again, this is running with no computer blades on at the moment. This is just the chassis running. Uh, and I think if I remember from the past experience, it's pulling about 600 watts right now, just at idle with no computers powered up, which is kind of crazy. If I wanted to power a unit up, I would insert the blade like so. The blinking means that the chassis is communicating with the server to figure out what its configuration options are. So basically, how do I power it? What do you have in you? Once that goes solid, I can press that white button and it'll power it up and I can do that for the rest of the blades. I do see our warning light went out, so that means it is happy and it is happily running on three of the four power supplies. So I'll have to figure out what happened with that one at some point. And you can hear the fan kind of ramping down a little bit right now as it's getting a bit happier. But let's see if we can aggravate it because that's, that's fun, right? Let's see if we can pull one of these power supplies. Let's see what that does. I see it's ramping up the fans at the moment. Let's see if we can get this thing to go into turbo mode. So I can hear the fans ramping up. They're still going up. Still going up. Good gravy. While it's ramping, it'd be a good time to tell you at the bottom down here is a 220 volt PDU or power distribution unit with a circuit breaker. Uh, eventually that will be what powers this system on and off. I'll have a nice big breaker on the bottom for it. Yeah, let's take you around to the back so you can experience it back there. So here we are at the back. 
You can hear the air coming out of this one. This fan's got a problem. So what we do is we're gonna pull that out. We're gonna reseat it. Let's see if that makes it happy. I don't think that's seated happily. So we're gonna pull back out, reseat it back in there. I hopefully you can hear me. You may not be able to hear me at all. But this is what it sounds like under full load, which is pretty crazy. It's basically got a jet engine in it. Yep, I hear the second one starting to fire up. <laughs> oh, good gravy. It sounds like it's going to blow. But anywho, this is the Blade Center. Thanks for watching.